Hi, my name is Dylan Sara. Today I would like to share with you, you can make your own amazing pen, a broad-edged calligraphy pen with a stick and a knife. And then we'll draw something with it. There's something I really like about sticks. Some of these are sticks, some of them are pens. And yeah, for a, for a long time I've had a, um, a real relationship to, to elder. So a lot of these um, are made with elder branches and some of them are walnut. I have some cherry pens and apple and beech. Um, and elder is just one of my favorite plants. It often has these really cool, gnarled, interesting shapes and really beautiful forms, um, grows in such an amazing way. And when I met my, around the time I met my wife, I was building flutes from, from elder branches. Um, here's uh, a little one that I made for our kids. And um, so yeah, I was really involved in an intimate relationship with this plant. And um, haven't been flute building much recently, but I've really enjoyed returning to um, this plant, which I know so well, the elder, and, and using it to make pens. The reason elder is so great, both for, for flute building and for making pens, is that it has quite a soft uh, center, the pith here is really um, soft. That's why I have this uh, nail and uh, this tool here. You can use it to, um, you can see how you can just push that in. And that creates this, this hollowed space which uh, can hold some ink, which is really great um, for pen making. So we kind of have this inbuilt reservoir. There are a few, few different plants you can get that have that same, um, property of that soft center. Be careful with whatever plant material you're using. It's always um, really important and advisable to educate yourself uh, about it first, because there are some plants which are poisonous. Even the wood is poisonous. Um, and some plants, even um, just skin contact can have adverse effects. So really take care with what you're getting acquainted with and what you're getting intimate with in nature. Um, and this is a, a perfect piece to now carve a pen with. I also have a really beautiful pocket knife, which I take with me many places, but even just this kind of um, carpet knife or whatever they're called, uh, you can use any sharp knife to, to make a pen of your stick. So I often will just find a way like how does it feel good to hold? Like sometimes they're, especially if it's curved or there's like branches still on it. Um, just find a, a nice kind of feel. How does it kind of sit well in the hand? I may need to shorten it a bit. I think this is a bit long, so I'll just um, be careful not to cut yourself. I'm doing things I would tell my kids not to do. Uh, this video is not made for children, and if you're doing this with children, then um, please take care. Doing it with yourself, please take care. Your fingers are important. I guess this is another way you can do it. Um, but this is just the kind of, I found this way to be effective. I'm not pushing too much that I would like risk cutting into my finger. I'm just scoring it around, keep going around, and, and at some point, because of this soft center, you can just like snap through. Um, yeah, I think this feel, feels nice. Um, so I want to decide, as I have here with these, um, this is like a, a broad edge calligraphy pen is uh, essentially what I'm after here, what I'd like to achieve. So I have quite a few of these and it's a, a drawing tool that I really enjoy and it's beautiful for writing as well. Um, but we can also just sharpen 
uh, to this kind of point. You can draw with that too, but I, I really love the, the broad edge drawing tools. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit so I can see what's going on here. Yeah, so if this is gonna be my top edge, I want this a bit flat and it's really important to have a nice, sharp knife. So my pocket knife, I, I keep it sharp with a whetstone, but if you're using this kind of um, knife, then uh, it should be nice and sharp. And you want a flat edge on top. So we're just like establishing that, that top edge here. And as you see, this one's a really clear example of the, the form that we're after. So it's, uh, we're just preserving that top edge and take advantage of that soft center and making kind of the reservoir under here. Um, it just kind of, the ink is just kind of stick and hold to the, um, the wood. So you can, it doesn't have to have this hollow center. You could just um, do this with any stick, but it will hold a bit more ink if you, if you do. And there are even more wonderful, advanced, tricky things you can do with it. So I try to find the opposite side, um, try and get it pretty flat. This is, uh, and then just start shaving away at it. I don't want to take big chunks out. I just want to gently shave that edge off. And then it's quite, quite easy and you can do it in quite a controlled way. And I just, kind of apply a guiding pressure on the back side of the blade with my thumb. So not just like hacking into it, not using the entire force of the arm, it's more just that gentle guidance. Um, it's more this thumb that's giving the pressure than this hand. So as we start to see that from the side. We want to take care to preserve this edge, but if you make a mistake, you can also cut further back into your stick. The great thing about these is they, they cost nothing. And, um, and if you mess something up, then you just can just carve some more into it or get another stick. Eventually, after a lot of use, they will go a bit blunt. Um, or sometimes you have these nice, sharp, chiseled corners. Um, and with time, they'll round off. Um, but you may just be happy with that. And if not, you can um, carve into it. And uh, just re-establish that crisp edge. So here, for that edge, I just want to keep scoring it. If you push too hard on the blade and it splits, um, the, the wood splits, I mean, then your, your edge is not going to be so nice to draw with. But you can kind of, here we go, yeah. That looks good. And um, yeah, you can experiment with these. Uh, I, I just like this, pretty simple. But um, like you can put notches in there and then you get like multiple lines and can do all sorts of things. It's a wonderful thing of these, making your own tools to really experiment and uh, play, be playful with it and have fun. So here's this uh, soft core and any kind of uh, sharp, scrapey, scratchy tool that you have available. So it could just be a nail or a screw, um, another stick, you can scrape that out. You can kind of push down into it a bit. It's kind of um, spongy, this stuff.
and you can get as uh, refined as you want. I'll leave it pretty rough and rustic. You could sand inside. Uh, I just love this, um, the kind of coloration of the uh, decomposition of the bark and stuff. It just something really pleasing about this stick to me. So um, I'll just leave it at that, but you could, you know, sand it down, make the, you can make the pen a work of art in itself. And that's, uh, that's it, a finished pen. So it may take a few attempts, um, may not, but um, it's something I would really encourage you to experiment with, try out, super fun. And you can try many different um, materials. But as I mentioned, just uh, take care to educate yourself about what plants you are using, what properties they have. And as you learn about those plants, then maybe you'll discover that they also have some really awesome mythological or historical associations. And um, it's just a really fun, fun thing to do and a nice way to learn about something which we can then take and uh, write with and draw with and incorporate into our creative process. I'm working directly into my Patreon zine for the month and have the excellent reference photo from the Sketchy Art School Inktober group. Uh, today's prompt um, was Raven and ravens are just glorious, majestic, big black birds which live around here, which is nice. Um, and here I just want to show you like the variety of line that you can get from these awesome pens. <clears throat> Missed a bit there, but um, yeah, so you can see here just the variation between these thick broad lines and these really fine lines and I just love the diversity of line quality you can get with this super simple homemade drawing tool. It's um, something I've really come to love and um, working with these broad edge drawing tools is um, something which has uh, yeah, had a big impact upon my process and um, I just love being able to make them myself. So much fun and I hope that you'll have fun making them too. And by diluting or dragging out, dragging out that um, pen stroke, you can get this nice kind of grey scale to get this awesome diversity of uh, saturation and intensity. The ink is still wet, but um, here you can just see the the awesome variety in the, the line work that you can get with these pens. And, and you can just make them with sticks. Super cool drawing tool, uh, and here's a, a nice raven. So if you, if you enjoyed that, I hope, um, I hope to inspire some people that maybe, you know, your self-made art supplies are gonna become um, some of your favorite supplies. I have a whole class on making natural art supplies and focusing on portraiture, um, ink naturally at the Sketchy Art School. The link is below. And um, yeah, if you like this drawing or this way of making a pen, um, comment below, subscribe to this channel. I would love to keep you updated with uh, my new work um, and for the rest of this month and certainly into the future, I'll be doing a lot of stick pen drawing uh, with natural ink, with this acorn ink here, and I'd love to share it with you. So make sure you get the updates, uh, subscribe, like, comment, I would love to hear from you, and um, get in touch. And I look forward to sharing more of this stuff with you soon. If you're on Instagram, Tag me if you make something with your own stick pen because I would love to see what you do. At Dylan underscore Sarah. Um, that would be really awesome. All right, take care. And have fun foraging for your new favorite art supplies.